We're very thankful the Lord has given us another opportunity to come here to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, and we certainly appreciate the church uh, for allowing us to come this way and for their prayers and support, and I uh, appreciate the prayers of each and every one. And uh, we know that there's been uh, several revivals that's already uh, went on, some that will begin, and uh, we want to make mention that Friendship's uh, meeting here will begin the first Sunday night in June, uh, having... Uh, night services at 7 and uh, during the day at 11 and we'd invite anyone to come. Uh, the church was very blessed last year with visitors and we are each Sunday and we appreciate each one that come and we'd like to invite our brothers and sisters to come and, um, and not just to be here, uh, but we want you to come and serve the Lord and do what the Lord would have you to do and uh, we pray that many lost souls will be saved, whether they attend here. We want the ones that attend here to be saved, but no matter where they're from, we want them to be saved, and we pray that the Lord will uh, meet with us and that we'll get ourselves in the right condition, that God could receive all the honor and glory uh, from every effort could be put forth on behalf of His Son's name. We're going to take a reading lesson in the book of Matthew in the 23rd chapter, read a few verses of Scripture here, and Matthew 23, and we'll start at verse 1. It says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. And all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad of their psalteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost room uh, at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Now, with my mistakes, I'm sure I made there in reading, that's the first 12 verses of Scripture uh, here in your hearing. Uh, and as the Lord's talking to not just his disciples, it says to a multitude and to his disciples. So I believe that there were uh, obviously believers, those that had been saved by the grace of God and those that had uh, uh, had John's baptism and those that were following after him and his teaching. And I believe there were people that were just curious to him. Uh, people that were there all the time listening to him, trying to catch him in his words, trying to find fault with him. Uh, and I'm sure some passers-by that were just interested in this man that they had heard some stories of uh, I, I believe and have found in my life that there's been a lot of different people come to the uh, Lord's house and, and they might not all have the same intentions. I believe much like what was probably there is the same here as there were believers, those that have been saved, those that were just curious and those that probably was there just to find fault. Uh, but I want you to see here that as the Lord had them gathered there and he knew who was there and he knew what they needed to hear, and certainly did his disciples, he wanted to teach them. And he began to talk about the scribes and the Pharisees. Those are mentioned many times in the Lord's teaching. Uh, and he would warn about them, these scribes and Pharisees, uh, uh, that their ways. Now, the Pharisees were just a sect of Jews. They were Jewish. Uh, but these particular Jews were very stringent to points of the law. Uh, and I strict, uh, stress there that only to certain points uh, because they weren't faithful in all the law, uh, only to those things that really just fit them just right, things that they felt were in their control. But we find in the teaching of the Gospels, 
Uh, and even in the book of Acts, that these Pharisees, they had not mixed any of the teachings that fell to them by faith. So here we find that he is telling them, now these Pharisees and scribes, they sit in Moses' seat. They sit there by the law, and they're going to tell you to observe things that Moses was commanded to observe, and that you ought to do. But don't do like they do. Uh, they say, and they don't do. Uh, so what he was telling him there is that they were hypocrites. They were people that would tell somebody to do a certain thing or not to do a certain thing, and they do the exact opposite of it. He said, don't, don't be like them uh, and, and go after their example. But we find that it goes on here in verse 5. It says, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. Um, and that is a, a, a thought that is upon us uh, this evening. Uh, is are we serving God to be serving God? Are we serving the God to be seen of men? Are we doing that which we do? Do we go to the Lord's house to please someone? Or do we go there to please the Lord? Do we get up and, and try to do that which is right bound solely by duty? Solely by what we expect others to think us to do? Or do we do that which is right in the sight of God solely to please the Lord? These Pharisees here, the works that they did, and they did many things according to the law, uh, but they done them to be seen of men. I believe there's a lot of people in the world that are religious. And that's, that's what I said. I didn't say they were saved. I'm saying they're religious. And their religion and their uh, uh, presentation of what they are is not sincere. The scriptures talk about those that come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are wolves. I believe there's many people in, in the world today that claim to know Christ, that claim Jesus from their mouth, but their heart is far from him. I believe the scriptures teach that, that they come near with their mouth, but their heart is far from him. And I believe these people were that way. And I believe there's people like that in the world today. And I hope there ain't people in the Lord's church today that they are only serving God from the neck up. I pray that we're serving him from the heart. That's the only way you can serve him. It says here, they make broad their psalteries and they enlarge their borders of their garments. Uh, they wear, uh, they wore fancy clothes. Um, they were very embroidered and, and very uh, uh, elaborate, you might say. Um, now, I believe in dressing the very best that we can. I believe to, uh, to my uh, thinking of the scriptures that we need to give the Lord the very best that we can. Now, I don't believe that we need to. I've heard of people saying, we're going to have an old-fashioned meeting. Uh, certain religious organizations, they're going to have an old-fashioned meeting and into some mockery of it, they'll meet in overalls or they'll meet in jeans and they'll decide they're going to wear boots and sit on straw and meet outside and, and, and that's being old-fashioned to them. Let me tell you what, that's the best many people back then could do and it may be the best that some people can do today uh, is to, uh, to dress in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, more... Uh, regular clothes, what, what we wouldn't call Sunday clothes, but I don't know what Sunday clothes are. If they're clean and they're the best you have and they cover you up, I'm going to tell you what, that's what we ought to wear. The very best that we have because the Lord gave the very best we have. Uh, he has for us. But let me tell you, if we go to church and our goal is to outdress the other person next to us, then we've gone for the wrong reason. And we buy a dress or a suit or a tie in the, in the uh, aspect of wanting to show people what we have and what we've gained. I'm going to tell you what, you might as well just go on an old pair of blue jeans. Because that heart is not right. That's to be seen of me. I ain't against wearing a suit. I wear a suit and tie. That's what I feel that I, I need to do. The Lord has blessed me. And that's the very least I can do for what God has done for me. Uh, of uh, the things of this life. Is to honor Him. But I'm going to tell you what. The very minute that I put on a tie. Just because I want everybody else to think I'm something. 
Uh, when I'm not, I'm telling you what I'm wrong. And if people go to church to show off what they've got, their jewelry, their clothes, their cars, whatever it might be, let me tell you something. That's wrong, and that ain't from the heart. It says here, and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts. Some people think they're better than other people. Say, well, that's a judgment. Well, you go on what you see, and uh, Brother Briley, you say that we're fruit bearers, and we judge a person by the fruit that they bear. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There's people in this world, and I'm afraid they sit in Baptist churches today, that they think there's things that are beneath them. I'm going to tell you what, we ain't but that close to all of us being homeless and hungry. And I can tell you what, God can make us that way in a blink of an eye if we ain't careful. But we believe sometimes that things are beneath us and that we deserve to be exalted. And if we want to exalt ourselves, that well, we need a special, special place to sit. I've seen people that, you know, now you go to churches. They do that here. Everybody's got a, a place that they're used to sitting. They get used to that. But I'm going to tell you what, the plane that you go in and you say, yeah, it's my seat. You need to get up from there. That's where I sit. I'm going to tell you what, that's the wrong thing to be. And there's people in this world today, they think they're below. I, I, and I, I'm just thankful. I, I, I'm thankful that uh, I was raised up to go to little old Baptist churches and I ain't against uh, big congregations, it all gives a better opportunity to spread the gospel. But if they're there for a show, then they're further for the wrong reason. But if you've got 15 in the church house and they're there for a show, they're there for the wrong reason. So the size of the crowd won't necessarily mean that a small crowd is necessarily going to be more humble. If they're there to show what they are, then they're there for the wrong reason. But I'm thankful to be in a little old country church. Thankful. There's a lot of people that would look down on us. They'd say, oh, y'all are just a little old country church. Well, thank God that we are. I thank God for all these little old country churches scattered around. Uh, and, and I know a country church can sit and see limits. Now, that ain't what I mean by the physical location. And I'm talking about these local little bodies of the Lord that he has set up, Missionary and Baptist Church, the Lord's Church, wherever it is in the world. I'm thankful of it. It might not be big and glamorous to the world, but that ain't here who we're here to serve is man. We're here to serve the Lord. And I, I'm just going to tell you, this building right here, this is beautiful. And you say, oh, you're bragging on it. It's beautiful because the Lord makes here. It's beautiful because it's been set aside for the worship of God. It's beautiful for what God has done inside of it through and by His Son, Jesus. That is why it's beautiful that when I walk in this building, even by myself, I can picture where people sit and the testimonies that they have brought forth are with tears and to see lost sinners get saved and them to tell about it and join the Lord's church. Let me tell you to see people rejoice Shout and sing. Yes, it's beautiful. I'm telling you what, these bitches, this building can talk. I'm going to tell you what, the glory of God can't be contained within this building. It might not look much to the world, but it is a beautiful little building. And this little community, a lot of them call Frog Pond. I'm going to tell you what, out here, just on the, sitting on the Galen Road, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, and all just like it across this land and country, are beautiful, but I'm going to tell you what, not to the eye. That beauty is what we can see from right down in here. We don't need to be like these people who love the uppermost rooms and love the flash and love all the, 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 the beauty and glory that we think it brings us. That's what a lot of people want. They like to go to something that, well, look what I, it, this it makes me look better. I'm going to tell you what, that. That ain't the way we need to go to the Lord's house. It says the chief uh, sit in the uh, seats in the synagogue and the greetings in the marketplace to be called of men rabbi. But be not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye your brethren. And call no man father upon earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be called ye 
masters, for one is your master, even Christ. So we look here and we find that there are people and religious people, and I stress religious, that claim to be a church, so-called church, and they like to be called rabbi. Well, there ain't but one master, and that's the Lord God above us. And we are to call no one religiously in this world our Father. That is the words of our Lord. And there is a religion, not a God-called religion, not a God-sent religion, but there is a religion that believes in referring to a man wearing a big robe to call him Father. That is wrong. That is a sin that is against the will of God. And they soak it up. They soak up their position. They soak up their power. And their buildings, well, they're glorious to look at. They're beautiful in the outside of the architecture and the gold and all that. Well, I guess they're beautiful. I don't know. I ain't never been in one. Just seen pictures of them. But as far as those natural things, people might say, look how beautiful it is. I'm going to tell you what, if it ain't got the Lord in it, it ain't beautiful at all. It's ugly is what it is. And I'm going to tell you what, there's religious people in the world. There's preachers in the world. There's elders in churches that they love their position and people building them up in that position. I'm going to tell you what, we better be careful now that we ain't going to the Lord's house and we ain't doing for the Lord to be seen a man. We find in the scriptures, and you bear with us here for just a little while of time. I know that this ain't nothing that's going to tickle anybody's ear, but I don't reckon it's supposed to. There are people in the world that even when they pray, they want to be heard. And even when they give, they want to be seen. What does the scripture say about that? Matthew 6 says, Take heed that you do not your alms or your giving before uh, a man to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. I ain't against giving. Uh, we ought to give more than what we do to help those that are in need. But if you're only giving for your honor and glory, you're doing it for the wrong reason. It needs to be done for the honor and glory of God. It says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they shall have their reward. But when thou dost give alms, let not thy right hand know what the uh, left hand know what the right hand doeth. Let thine alms may be secret, that thy father which is seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. What the Lord is saying here to him is, when you give, when you help someone in need, and that giving might not be just money. It might be a lot of different forms. But when you give to help someone, don't let everybody know. Don't call a press conference. No, hey, I've got to go over here and do this. Uh, Kevin Harrison's down on his luck or this person's down on his luck. I, I, I've got to help them and people have helped me in my life. And I appreciate it. But you know what? They never asked for anything. Say, so help me. When I was in need. And I'm going to tell you what. We've tried by the grace of God. At times in little. Very weak ways to help others. And I, I can't do a lot. But I do try in little ways. But that's for the Lord uh, to know. Uh, uh, and that ain't for me. Uh, uh, to, to brag about. Because I ain't done nothing. I'm just listening to a song. I've uh, been sung here recently. Quite a bit here at Friendship. By one of the young uh, members of the church. That I can't even walk without him holding my hand. And I can tell you right now. I can't do nothing without the Lord. And that song it just gives me the remembrance. To be humble and realize we can do nothing without him. Even the things we have to give. They ain't really ours. Why? What, what do we have? What do we own? We're giving to someone. All we're doing is bestowing upon them and giving to them and imparting to them what God has already given to us. And we need to do that in a manner that is humble before God. Say, well, it says your Lord's you opening. A lot of people give. And these TV preachers, I used to hear them when I was a boy growing up. And they would say they'd heal you and do all that. And I don't believe that no more than a goose. And they would say, send in. And almost 
Send in and then you won't have to worry about no more uh, problems. You send in to me and God's going to double all your money or trip all your money. You'll never have to worry about a thing. I'm going to tell you what. You may give, but you'll still have to go to work tomorrow. You'll still have to go when they're trying to earn a living. If you're only giving, thinking that, that God will take this money I give and he'll quadruple it, then you're giving wrong. It needs to be give out of the heart of love to please God and to help our fellow man, not for your own profit. And that's what this scripture is teaching. It says, and when thou prayest, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street. They may be seen of men. For verily I say unto you, they shall have their reward. What is he saying there? He's saying there's people that they love to get out and they want everybody to hear them. They want to they get the, the attention of everybody and then they want to rehearse some big uh, speech to God. I'm going to tell you what, I've been in part, I've seen some of that in my lifetime. I've, I've been to dinners and things for work and, and, and different occasions. And you see, they'd have somebody to give an invocation or say a prayer and you'd watch a man get up uh, up there and he'd reach for a piece of paper and he'd lay it down on the book board or whatever podium that it was and he'd read off it his prayer. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't think much of that. I, I wouldn't give you a nickel. I, that's to, nickel's too much. I wouldn't give you anything for a rode out prayer. Prayer is the sincere desire of the heart. And if you're ever going to pray in public, if you're ever asked to pray over food, uh, over uh, uh, at a graduation, uh, at whatever it might be, at the Lord's house, at the courthouse, wherever that it is, I ask you to present your heart before God. To not be like one of them to be seen a man, but to just call on the Lord and tell him what's on your heart. Because that's exactly what our Lord deserves. Is he deserves the honor and the glory of us humbling ourselves before him. Say, preacher, if you never prayed standing, well, you better believe I have. Have I prayed driving down the road? I have tried. I have tried on my knees. I've tried laying down. I've tried sitting down. I have tried praying to my Lord. And a few times he helps me and I get through. But the day that I just have to rehearse some prayer before people so that I've got it all wrote out and everybody, ain't nobody offended. Let me tell you what, oh, Kevin Harrison needs to go to the house because that is to be seen of men. It wrote out to, uh, to sound uh, uh, the right words. Well, I don't tell you what. I don't always have the right words. I don't want them preaching. I'm satisfied. I don't want them praying. But the Lord knows my heart. We don't need to be like that. You know, that nature, uh, do you know where that nature comes from? To want to be exalted and want people to look at us and, and want people to build us up and tell us how good we are. Do you know where that nature comes from? It comes from the devil. The book of Isaiah in the 14th chapter and verse 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground at this week of the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation size of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high. Satan himself desired. He desired to be equal to and higher than God Almighty. He was jealous of God. He wanted his own honor and glory. And he exalted himself. And God put him down. That's where that sinful nature comes from. So when a person is prideful, exalting their self, boastful about what they have and what they have done, I'm going to tell you what, and they leave the Lord out of all of it. Let me tell you where that is. That is coming from the devil. That nature is of Satan. And people don't like that, but that's where it comes from. That's where these Pharisees and scribes were, and that's where we are, if we're that way. All that what we've got. You know what? I, if I got what I deserved, and we all did, we would be living off somewhere, uh, not having a house, food, nothing. We'd be just paupers is what we'd be. We better be careful 
Oh, Nebuchadnezzar thought he had a whole lot and God took it for him, from him. And I want you to understand, that ain't the way to serve the Lord. But that's where that nature comes from. There was a group of men, uh, people back in the, in the book of Genesis that their language was the same. And they decided they was going to make them a city and a tower whose height would reach to heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the earth. They wanted a name. They weren't worried about the Lord's honor and glory of it. They wanted to build something up high so they could be honored and glorified. I'm going to tell you what. They were dumbfounded and scattered abroad, and that's where all the languages of this world come from. The Scriptures teach us, it says over here in Proverbs 25 and 27, it is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. I'm going to tell you what, I believe there's a lot of people in the world that they are doing what they are doing for their own honor and their own glory. And I'm going to tell you what, if we don't do it in the name of the Lord and we don't do it for His honor and glory, then it, it ain't going to be no count at all. It won't accomplish anything to be boastful. I mentioned there about prayer. I, I've grown up this way, and I've been took to a lot of churches in my life. And you know what, even as a young teenager, what I realized is there are some people when you have prayer, and a lot of people might not realize this, but we'll all pray at the same time, and you'll get two men, and they're going to uh, see if one of them ain't going to be out praying. They're going to be the last one praying. I, I've, I've been around that. Say, so, well, I just one time. It was many times that I have seen that. That ain't the way for us to be. That ain't praying. I'm going to tell you what, that's about the self-glorification of the man himself. And I want you to understand that those things is what God was talking about here. Is that we don't need to be in this condition. We don't need to be like they were uh, in the days of the Lord. It was over here in Mark in the 10th chapter in verse 35. And it says in James and John, the sons of David, Zebedee, Come to him saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. We want you to do for us, Lord, whatever we want. Well, you know what? I ask the Lord a lot more than I thank him for. And I need to slow down and start thanking the Lord for answering all the answered prayers. Because he's answered a bunch more than I'll ever be able to remember and thank him for. He's answered. In fact, he answers simple things. Uh, we pray for our watch, care, and protection, and he does that. And uh, I don't thank him like I should, but I thank you, Lord, for what you've done. But that, that sums us up. We're a selfish people. The majority of us are all the time. Lord, we want you to give us whatever we want. That's what they were saying. Whatever we should desire. And he said unto him, what would that I should do for you? And they said to him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy glory. You know, what they wanted was to be set in a special place. It's what they were thinking. Lord, I, and, and I realize that there is something much more to, to go into heaven when this life is over. Uh, being a member of the Lord's church and being a part of that bride. And I, I, I realize the, uh, uh, well, I don't fully realize. I, anybody that says they fully realize it. Uh, we can't comprehend the, the love and the majesty and the beauty of God and what he has prepared. Uh, but to my little understanding and very little of mine, I understand that there is a beauty and there is a prize there. And I believe that they had a desire of that. But they wanted a special spot. They wanted to be in a certain spot. And I'm sure to a certain degree, it was to, uh, to be just close to the Lord. But you know what? You ain't careful. You'll get to wanting it and you'll have your eye on that and you'll take your eyes off the Lord. We need to have our eyes on the Lord because if not, we'll get like they were one time. There was strife among them. Or bitch, one would be counted the greatest. I'm going to tell you what. When y'all are tallying up, when the Lord's tallying up, that's the one I'm worried about. It's the Lord tallying up. Kevin Harrison will be way down the list. Way, way on down the list of anything that'd be called great. Sorry, I'll be up at the top of that list. But great, my name won't ever be on that list. But that's what many people want. To be known as the strongest Baptist preacher. Well, I won't ever be known as that. And I don't deserve to be because I'm not. Some want to be known 
is the best prayer. I won't, I won't never be known for that neither because I'm not. Not the best testifier. Certainly ain't a singer. If you've ever heard me sing, can't tear a tune in a bucket. Not a good testifier. I, 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 I don't know that I can talk to a sinner. I wished I could. There's some sinners I wished God would help me when I talk to them uh, because it just seems like it's uh, I'm doing no good whatsoever. Uh, so my name is nowhere on a great list, but there is that desire among it seems on. They, they want to be seen and known for this. I'm going to tell you what, if that's our intentions, if our intentions are to be known for something, then we're going about this all wrong. If we want our church that we attend uh, to be exalted and, and known and, and, and everybody just think, oh my, I'm going to tell you what, we're going about it all wrong. Uh, that ain't the attitude for us to have at Friendship Church or any church around. Uh, I love friendship. I love coming here. But if we're here to build ourselves up, we think we're something. We're in the wrong business. I can tell you that because we ain't nothing. Nothing without the Lord. It says here in Galatians 6 and uh, 3, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So if we get thinking that we're something big, when we're really nothing, then we deceive ourselves. The scripture goes on down here and says, in this reading lesson, whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. So someone that raises himself up to, to be something or attempts to be or wants to be known, the Lord here says he'll be based or he'll be humbled. He'll be brought down. He, the Lord ain't going to share his glory with anybody and any of us, uh, uh, anything or anyone that we try to lift up, the Lord going to knock it down. He says here, he shall exalt himself, shall be at base. We need to be careful that we ain't building ourselves up. And that echoes for me as much as anybody else. Pride is a dangerous thing. And if you ain't careful, the devil, he'll put a good dose of that in you and keep feeding that pride and I, 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 I tell you, it can be our downfall. It says here, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So I look here and I see that it ain't what you got on and it ain't all the words you say. It ain't your talent in singing. And there's talented people that sing. And I believe they need to use that talent for the Lord and not for their own pocket. I believe that. Easy for me to say because I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But I'm going to tell you what, they need to use that talent to serve the Lord. And it, it, it ain't about uh, if we've got the right word to say. One of the sisters I grew up saying, she would always get up when she'd make a talk. She'd be so full. She didn't talk that much. And she'd say, now I know I can't make a pretty talk. I know I don't sound very good when I talk. And I used to love to hear her talk. Because I knew if she got up, that it was from the Lord. And uh, that meant something. I can just see her there at Siloam getting up. She's done gone on with the Lord. But I can, I can just see her standing up and, and saying, I can't talk good. But she sure sounded pretty to me. So it ain't about your words and your clothes. It, it ain't about how much you know and, and, and everybody thinking you're something. It's the humility and the humbleness and the humbleness of your heart to do and serve the Lord. Here, there was a man. He had a, uh, it says here, uh, one uh, at his home sick with palsy over in the book of Matthew in the eighth chapter. And he said, uh, he was asking the Lord to come. Uh, uh, well, I'll just read it. Matthew 8 and 5 says, And when Jesus entered Capernaum, there came to him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth homesick of a palsy and grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. He was talking to the Lord. And you could say he was talking to him. You could say he was praying to him. But he was calling to the Lord. He was letting him know, I've got somebody in need of your help. And the Lord says, I'll come. He says, I'll come. And I'll heal him. Most of us, why well, we'd have heard that, we'd have been shouting, we'd have been excited, we would have been beside ourselves, we'd have been clearing a path. Come on, Lord, get there. Notice what he said. 
centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. But that thou should come under my roof. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Now he wanted the Lord to come and he wanted the Lord to heal this man. He said, you're, Lord, you're the Lord. I, I, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. I, I'm a sinful man. I'm a low man. I'm a man of unclean lips as the scripture talks. Low and humble. And that's how he felt about himself before the Lord. And the Lord says, for he's went on says, for I'm a man under uh, the authority, having soldiers unto me, and I say to them, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. So he knew. Hey, I, this man said, Look, I'm not worthy. Even though I can do all this and people do what I say, I ain't worthy to ask you to come and you just do what I say. I'm not worthy of that. I ain't worthy of you to do that for me. But I want you to just, at your word, you can heal him. And Jesus heard it and marveled and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out in the outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done. And his servant was healed that self same hour. That man was not about it for him to say, Look, I've got the Lord to come to my home like that one Pharisee was. I've got the Lord in my home. I've got the Lord to come to me. He, he didn't have that attitude or not. I ain't worthy of you, Lord. But please still heal him. There's a woman. That had a daughter, I believe it was, over in the book of Matthew in the 15th chapter. And uh, uh, there was a woman that kept crying, saying her daughter was vexed of a devil. And the Lord, uh, uh, they, they answered her and said, go, we'll get away. And he told her, he said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, she was a, a woman of Canaan. So she wasn't not one that should have been coming, but she come to the Lord anyway. And then came they, she and worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. He, he, I, she'd heard all this and she just come and she was uh, just tore up and humble. And she said, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not meat to take the children's bread. Speaking of the Israelites bread and cast it to the dogs. Because that's how that they would look at others. And then she said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She said, Lord, I don't, I'm not asking for your bread. I'm not asking for your first. I'll just take the crumbs. I, I, I'll just take whatever will fall off to me. Just let me be close to you. Close enough to your table so that... When it falls off, that I can be there under it, down at your feet, and I can take that. And Jesus said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, and be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. I want you to know there's something to humility now. There's something to us being humble. And I want you to know if we want revival at friendship. I don't know if a soul of them hardly even listen to this anymore. I don't have a clue who listens and who don't. But if friendship wants a revival this year, if they want revival Sunday, if they want to see souls saved, if every church around us, you better come humble before God, not poking that chest out who you think you are. We're nothing. Less than nothing. All I am, the only good about me, is that I am a sinner saved by the grace of God. Saved as a nine-year-old boy, permitted to be raised up in church. I'm nothing without the Lord. I knew nothing without the Lord. I can't even get up out of bed in the morning if it ain't for the Lord. I can't have food to eat if it ain't for the Lord. I can't have vehicles, cars, clothes, all of it's God's. And he can take it all in just a matter of time. We better get to thinking, looking at ourselves in the mirror and get to realizing that maybe, my mom and daddy used to tell me when I was a little boy, and I say this because it was the truth, they would tell me I was getting a little bit too big for my britches. 
And uh, I heard that so much, I just knew what it meant, that I was getting a little too cocky. I was getting a little bit too big, thinking I was, they would say Big Ike. I don't know where that come from, that I thought I was something. And they would let me, I'd tell them something, I'd get to boasting or whatever, I just that way as a little kid, and I'm probably too much of that way now, to be honest, and the Lord knows. And they'd say, you're getting too big for your britches, and we're going to have to jerk a knot in that tail. Now, sometimes they joke around with it, but there's time or two they'd say, we're going to jerk a knot in that tail. Now, what did that mean? It meant they were going to get a hold of me, and they was going to whoop me, and they was going to let me see that mom and daddy was still in charge of Kevin Harrison, that I wasn't near as big as I thought I was, that I couldn't do near as much as I thought I could, that I wasn't near as independent and on my own, and a man, or even a young boy, getting my last thought, I was everything. Well, I wasn't. They showed me that. They set that car in the drive. I remember when I turned 18, I was so proud I was going to be a man. And there we sat in my family, all of them. Uh, and uh, Daddy uh, said prayer, and he said, Lord, bless Kevin. He's awful, almost a man. Busted my bubble right there. My pa snickered. My brother snickered. They thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And I thought, well, that ain't no good. And he let me know, you got a ways to go, son. I'm going to tell you what, this old boy has still got a ways to go to be what I need to be for my Lord. I ain't even close to what I ought to be. And anybody that thinks that we are where we need to be, that we have attained, we better think again. Lord, jerk a knot in our tail, we get to thinking we're something, we're nothing. You know what we get to do when we think we're something, we're nothing? We get to leaving God out of it. We get to thinking we know more than God. And we start leaving God out of His business. I'm going to tell you what, we're in trouble. When we start leaving God out of His work, we're in trouble. We better humble ourselves. If we'll humble ourselves, the Lord will raise us up. Well, we don't have to worry about it. You know, some of the best Christians, some of the best church members I ever knew, they wasn't popular in the world, and they didn't have all kinds of money. At least I don't think that they did. They didn't act like they did. But boy, they's good church members. So, and they loved the Lord, and they loved to think about lost sinners being saved, and they talked about it all the time. Now, you don't hear that amongst the older ones even today in their conversation like they did when I was a boy growing up. They come in talking about praying. They didn't do that to be bragging. They was letting everybody know it's come to have meeting today, and they did, and they's all out in those yacht lots praying. The women down uh, uh, by their stoves and by ironing boards and in their house praying unto God, and they humbled themselves for God, and I'm going to tell you what oh, the Lord did. He raised them up. He empowered them because they humbled themselves and honored His Son. With everything they did. They sung for the Lord. They prayed for the Lord. They testified for the Lord. Not for their sales. But they done it for God. And I'm going to tell you what. If we'll do that today. We'll get down to that old fashioned way. God will take care of us. And he'll save them the same old fashioned way. These sinners. They start seeing the church come together. Hat pyre me in it. Yeah it'll get a hold of them. Ain't no doubt that it will. The very toughest one. They'll, they'll wilt. Or they'll run. Ain't no way that they can do both. They can't stay where the Lord is. It's too bad on them. But we need to get ourselves right where we need to be with the Lord. I, I, I want to say I appreciate you listening. I, I never wears me out about continuing to do this. I'm doing it because the Lord put the burden on me and that's it. Not for anything else. And uh, I know my lifetime, my life will be short. And I ain't got long that I need to be serving the Lord. And uh, I want to do the best I can. And I hope and pray that my God and His Son Jesus gets all the honor and glory that they deserve out of these weak efforts that I try to put forth by their help. It is our effort. Thank you for listening. And may God bless you.